Right now on Crime 2 News at Noon, overnight high winds knocked out power for thousands of people all across the inland northwest. We do have the very latest on outages and how it might affect you. Plus, the Coeur d'Alene School District will reevaluate their school mask requirement today. This is after some pushback from parents. And we have some relatively light winds spreading across the inland northwest. I'll let you know about the future of wind and what that means for our temperatures. And a new resource in Washington State is truly a first of its kind aimed at helping domestic violence survivors. We'll tell you about this new bill just ahead. All right, but we have a lot of news to get to. Welcome to Crimpton News at Noon. I'm Laura Papetti, and we begin with this. If you're a Gonzaga Bulldogs fan, and quite frankly, who's not? Chances are you were up early this morning, maybe glued to your favorite sports reports on ESPN. Brenna Green, Crimpton's very own, joining us live now from the newsroom to give us updates. Brenna, not on one piece of news, but two big pieces of news for the program. Yeah, let's just dive in. The number one recruit in the country, Chet Holmgren, is headed to Gonzaga. Next fall, um, I will be, I will be a Gonzaga Bulldog. Yeah. Holmgren is now the highest rated recruit in Gonzaga history to commit to the program. He's won several National Player of the Year awards already and averaged 20.8 points, 12.6 rebounds, 4.7 blocks, and 4.5 assists per game this past season, all while shooting over a whopping 80%. From the field, he is likely a one and done player. When asked why Gonzaga, here's what Holmgren had to say. It's pretty perfect fit. Uh, you know, the way they play in space and play with pace, uh, you know, I don't want to, you know, end up getting bogged down and, you know, kind of stuck into the, you know, half court stuff. Uh, you know, I want to get out and run, get out and play fast. Uh, it's definitely a, a more NBA type style of play, uh, which I want to, you know, learn and be able to uh, excel at. Second piece of news we're still waiting on. Jalen Suggs will announce if he is staying in school or going to the NBA today at 1240 on ESPN. However, it's on ESPN's The Jump. So uh, odds are, which is an NBA show, so odds are probably going to the league. Back to you, Laura. All right, my friend, thank you. And that is Brenda Green reporting. It is 12.02. Thousands of people woke up this morning without power after winds whipped through the inland northwest throughout the night. It was pretty wild out there. We do want to start today by giving you the latest updates on outages in our area. So let's take a look right now. Avista reporting more than 2900 people without power again in this area. Inland Power is reporting more than 1400 outages. Most of the outages, by the way, in Spokane County. Meanwhile, in Spokane South Hill, take a look at some of the damage people woke up to this morning as crews have been out there for hours working this morning and into the afternoon to get things cleaned up and restore power. And we're certainly tracking it here on CREM2. So we'll post the very latest on CREM.com and in the CREM2 mobile app and continue to give you updates on outages across the region. And then overnight, this was the scene given to us from the Spokane Fire Department when they arrived at the scene of a brush fire near the Palouse Highway and Valley Chapel Road. By the way, taking a look at this video, it isn't blurry. We weren't out of focus. It's actually from the amount of dust that was blowing in the area. Traffic was at a standstill on the highway as dust mixed with those high winds made for a fire. And we spoke to Spokane Fire about this situation. So we had no evacuations. We did have structures that were threatened. We had engines there very rapidly. Um, we were able to move the fire around that. But at this point, the fire is contained. Um, we have crews who will be out there all night monitoring, making sure that nothing kicks up with this wind. Um, all the homes are back and safe at this point. And thank you, the firefighters, for that. The department says they still do, do not know how the fire actually began and that dust did make it extremely hard to see how big the fire was. But we'll certainly uh, continue to gather more information and share those details throughout the afternoon on crumb.com and tonight, of course, starting at four o'clock. All right, it is 12.04 right now. Beautiful sunshine out there, much calmer in terms of wind. We have Jeremy Lagoo standing by. Hi, Jeremy. Hi, Laura, and it, uh, it is much more beautiful than it was earlier today, and we have a lot less wind. You can see nothing but sunshine out there as temperatures continue to climb. We are in the upper 40s right now, so a far cry from where we were this time yesterday. 
But that all comes thanks to our cold front that moved through along with some of those winds. Now the wind will continue to die down as we head into the afternoon. Now it's those wind gusts up in the teens miles per hour. So it's there, it's just not as strong as it has been. But the wind is really about the only contender. It's nothing but sunny skies taking us through the day today and tomorrow as wind continues to die down. So that's a bit of good news. The other good news is that temperatures are going to rebound quickly. Believe it or not, by this afternoon, we are in the upper 50s, which is very normal for where we should be this time of year. Tomorrow, even warmer. And by the time we get into Wednesday, we're back knocking on the door of the 70s. I'll have your full forecast coming up in just a bit. After three weeks and 45 witnesses, the jury is heading into deliberation of the trial of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin. Now this morning, the attorneys for the prosecution and defense were giving their, the jury their closing arguments along with advice and recommendations from the judge on how they should proceed. The jury will now be sequestered for as long as it takes for them to deliberate. The city of Minneapolis is watching and preparing for the jury's verdict. Members of the Minneapolis National Guard are stationed throughout the city. Some businesses have already boarded up in anticipation of unrest. Minneapolis public school officials are also bracing for the verdict. They are switching students to remote learning later this week for the safety of the kids. Today, the Coeur d'Alene School District will reevaluate their school mask requirement. This is coming after pushback from parents. The Panhandle Health District rescinded their mask mandate at the end of March. However, the school district's rule still in place. Protesters have argued that schools should not be forcing the kids to wear masks when the health district no longer requires them. Today, they will be reviewing a couple of options, including keeping the current mandate or completely rescinding it altogether. Trustee Lisa May was the most vocal about not making a decision until the community can see updated data. Our students have lost so much in the last year and we're asking a small amount to continue this year masked at least two weeks till we see how spring break settles out. So May is arguing that the school just got back from spring break and with traveling comes an increase in positive COVID-19 cases. The board meeting will begin tonight. That is at five o'clock. Also more school news today, Spokane Public Schools is holding a community forum to discuss boundary changes to Northside schools. This is including Finch Elementary, Glover Middle School and North Central High School, among others. The community is encouraged to attend the forum to ask questions and provide comments on the newly proposed boundary changes. For more information about the boundary changes and to register to attend the meeting, easy to do. Just text the word school. Again, this is a text line. Write the word school to 509-448-2000. We'll send you a link directly to your phone. And today's students in Washington who have not already begun in-person learning will get a chance to do so. This is related to Governor Jay Inslee signing an emergency proclamation back in March to get students back to in-person learning in some form by April 19th. The proclamation requires schools to offer an in-person instruction option that equates to at least 30% of instructional time. And the CDC now reporting this, that half of all American adults have received at least one COVID vaccine dose. Now some colleges are considering requiring students to get the vaccine before returning to in-person classes. WSU says it is actively discussing a requirement. University officials say it would likely include exemptions for existing medical conditions and religious objections. UW says they will likely make a decision by June 1st. In the meantime, they're consulting with local health agencies. Seattle's the largest university so far in Washington to announce a COVID vaccine requirement for the fall. All right, a new resource in Washington is a first of its kind aimed at helping domestic violence survivors. A bill that passed this week will provide victims of strangulation access to forensic nurse examiners. Advocates say evidence from medical exams is really the best way to hold abusers accountable. Strangulation marks are not always visible to the untrained eye, and that's why this is so significant. What I'm also extremely excited about with this bill is that we're not requiring the survivor to pay the cost of her abuse. That the medical cost for these forensic examinations is going to be paid out of the, the victim fund. And that is extremely appropriate as it is done for survivors of sexual assault. 
In 2018, there were more than 320 known cases of strangulation in King County. 64 of those were treated in the hospital and only four of them received a forensic exam. It is 12:10 right now. Still to come right here on Crimson News at noon. Federal lawmakers want to add more justices to the Supreme Court. But the question is, can they legally? So after the break, we'll take a closer look at what the Constitution says about the Supreme Court.